So in this video, we are going to talk about the save me complex in relationships as it relates to all of the different attachment styles. So this is actually based off of the work of somebody named Dr. Robert Sternberg, who talked about the different 26 stories that we have about love and how that really shapes our experience of what we expect love to be. So it really shapes our expectations more than anything else. Now, I'm not going to go through all 26 stories. What I'll just do is post those 26 stories in the comments box or the description down below if you're curious. Um, as I did go through and do a little bit of research about these different stories, I'm not personally sure that in my client practice, I saw every single person only have one of these stories. I think there were often multiple of these stories sort of engaging and creating a person's expectations, but there's really powerful takeaways from one of the ones that stood out to me today, which is the save me complex in relationships. I need to be saved. So this is actually a common theme I saw across all different attachment styles. Of course, I would see it slightly more with anxious preoccupied, followed by fearful avoidance, followed by dismissive avoidance last. But I do want to be clear that dismissive avoidance also had this as well. And what I find the roots of this to be at a subconscious level is essentially a yearning for a parent. Now, if you can imagine yourself wanting to be saved and you have this dynamic in your life of wanting to be saved from maybe a toxic pattern that you have, an unhealthy behavior, feeling a sense of being learned helpless, uh, feeling a sense of learned helplessness in your life or being helpless to some kind of event, like not knowing what you want to do for a living or the loss of a job or having some sort of issue, not being able to find the right place to live. Like whatever the external event is that may be triggering this or behavior, like maybe it's being saved from an addiction or a problem or, you know, a money issue. You can imagine whichever that is um, because I've seen many variations of this for different people but it's actually a form of arrested development. In other words, what happens when we have arrested development is we go through a traumatic event or set of events that programs a wound at the subconscious level of mind because it's repetition and emotion that pro programs something. But also if there's a really strong emotional experience, it can create a bit of an immediate impact and an immediate wound. I'll just give you an example. Somebody could have a wound of needing to be saved and feeling unsafe or lost or all alone, right? And that may be at its core because you were exposed to some kind of unsafe situation over and over and over again in childhood. Maybe there was a lot of chaos in your home all the time, but you could also have an unsafe wound because you, you know, God forbid, let's say Bob, you know, was driving in the neighborhood the other day and got into a bad car accident and immediately has an unsafe wound programmed into his subconscious. So where we're, wherever we have this wound, we actually need to heal the wound. And usually there's also a deep set of unmet needs. And what essentially takes place at the subconscious level of mind is when, whenever we go through a trauma, the age in which we acquired that trauma, it imprinted our subconscious mind. In other words, the age at which that happened, we still, when that trauma is catalyzed, essentially are the emotional age of what age we were when the trauma happened to begin with. So if you've ever had the experience of like, let's say the abandonment core wound, you may actually find that when you're afraid of being abandoned, you feel childlike emotionally, and you may even do childish things. And this is not from a place of judgment. This is from a place of you actually having this, this wound and coming from that wounded space. Because when we have a really deep imprint at our subconscious level of mind, we form like a shell around it. We just go into immediate coping. We don't evaluate the wound, work through the wound, work to reprogram or recondition the wound. And so we don't resolve anything. Nothing changes from the age at which we acquired the wound, right? The wound is just there with the coping mechanism that acts as a shell around it. So when you feel abandoned, your coping mechanism is to try to cling to somebody or seek reassurance and certainty in all these different ways then the age at which you started doing that, you almost return emotionally to acting of that age in your adult life. And this is just because the subconscious mind stores everything. And then we form these automatic coping mechanisms around these different things. Now, it's not, not always so cut and dry, but hopefully you're seeing that make sense because the principle in theme rings very true. 
And so when you see this dynamic of having the save me, um, you know, story about relationships and you're waiting to be saved, there are a few really important things that you need to know. The most important thing is that nobody will save you except for yourself. Okay. I know that's not the nicest thing to hear, but it's the most freeing. And when we get caught in this frame of reference of thinking, I'm waiting for something external to give me back my power, to save me, to boost me, to support me, to you know help me. When we do that, we keep ourselves locked in that state of learned helplessness because we keep just repeating the same coping mechanisms and behaviors and waiting for the outside world to change. But if you pay close attention, a lot of the outside behaviors you have are the things that are actually keeping that wound alive or those unmet needs alive. It really tends to be both. So look at what happens when you have an abandonment core wound. You may do things that are coming from this emotionally needy space that then accidentally push people away because they feel like their boundaries might be accidentally violated or they feel like it's too much too soon in a relationship and they they get a little nervous about that. So oftentimes the, be, the very behaviors that we're holding on to are the very things that actually keep the cycle alive. So the save me story, the first thing you need to know is that you are going to save you. And we do this through something called reparenting. Now, the idea of reparenting, and we have a whole course on this that you can check out for free for seven days inside PDS if you want to use the link down below. But the whole idea of um, the, the reparenting concept is that we have to understand what our deep unmet needs are in the context of wanting to be saved. And then we have to understand what our wounds are as well. So I'm going to give you a few steps here to really move through. Step number one is to close your eyes or just focus, whatever you want to do. And you can pause this video as needed and really dial into this first really important thing, which is when you want somebody to save you, what do you actually want them to do for you? If they saved you, what would it look like? Would it be that you're crying and they scoop you up and give you a hug? And then what would they do next? Would they say really validating or reinforcing things to you, really encouraging things? And then what happens after that? Do they then proceed to, you know, help you through the problem by, let's say the problem is that you um, don't know what career path to take next, or you're struggling with money. You know, let's just use the money example. They're going to help you with, with your finances and help you get a better job and give you some money. You know, if it's those three things, those are the very things that you have to empower within yourself. You have to be more physically kind to yourself, right? You're just mirroring back those actions you were projecting onto somebody else. So if you wanted a hug, well, you have to be more physically kind to yourself. That can look like eating healthier, sleeping better, um, doing light exercise, like anything that's going to create a sense of physical compassion for your own self, your own body. The second thing would be if that person's encouraging to you, you have to make sure you stop tearing yourself down in your internal dialogue and be kind, compassionate, encouraging, and validating to yourself on a regular basis. Even doing something habitually every day, like writing out your wins for the day, that would be a great example of that. Then if they are going to give you money or empower you financially, how are you going to take action steps to do that in the relationship to yourself? And that may require creating a plan. Maybe you start with creating a bit of a budget each week. Maybe you then start by saying, okay, you know, what skills do I have to acquire and chip away at over the next six months to increase my value in the marketplace? You know, whatever it might be, you want to make sure you've dialed that in. And it sounds funny because you're like, no, I want it to be from somebody else. But you you really can't imagine how great you're going to feel on the other side of giving to yourself and empowering within yourself exactly that which you're seeking so desperately outside of yourself. So after conducting many polls and surveys at the personal development school over the past few years, we have found that students come in and 92% of them become dominantly securely attached within 90 days if they focus on six crucial areas. These six crucial areas have to do with what it takes to become secure according to Gibson Integrated Attachment Theory. And this is to tackle core wounds, learn your needs, learn to emotionally regulate, develop boundaries, communicate better, and update old behavioral coping mechanisms. Now we have these roadmaps and course tracks laid out for you on the other side of when you join. So everything is simple and in front of you to help you 
Take exactly the steps that you need to, to master your love life, create thriving relationships, and really see the results in your healing journey so you can let go of old wounds, old baggage, and truly leave it behind. And on top of that, included in this 30% off promotion for life, you also gain access to our daily live events, webinars. I'll be there three days a week to answer any questions that you have in your journey. And we have amazing certified integrated attachment theory experts who are there to support you with their daily live events and webinars Monday through Saturday. And this is a great opportunity to connect with like-minded people to get your questions answered and receive any extra bonus support that you need. And last but not least, we even have social events on a daily basis. So you can practice uh, through a sharing circle, being a little bit more vulnerable, connecting with other like-minded people. You can practice through communication scripts, having tough conversations and really modeling that out. And there are so many other supportive events that are there for you on your journey. So I would love for you to join and take this opportunity. I would love for you to be part of this challenge to become securely attached within that 90 day period. And I can't wait to see you on the other side. And so you really want to hone in on those needs. And if it's helpful to you, write out all the different needs you can think of. Like if you imagine the perfect scenario in the lowest moment when somebody comes in and saves you, what exactly would they need from them? How can you give it to you? And it's actually going to empower you to step out of this cycle of consciousness that's really keeping you stuck and put you, instead of you know staying stuck in the problem, it's going to move you towards the solution. And if you can time block those things, like if you can really say, okay, I'm going to do this for 15 minutes on Monday, this for 15 minutes on Wednesdays, like even a morning routine, write out encouraging words to yourself or evening routine, write out your wins from the day. Like if you can actually create a bit of habit and structure, Repetition and emotion reprograms the subconscious mind. So if you've got this habitual structural component of doing this, you're actually rewiring these deeply unmet needs that you're waiting for a parent to meet for you outside of yourself, that once you empower within yourself and become your own parent, this is how you're going to heal. This is actually going to be how you also make an impact on healing generational trauma for the future. Now, you might also have painful stories, like things that you acquired in terms of, you know, negative beliefs about yourself. I'm not good enough to, to be in a relationship. I'm not good enough to make more money. I'm, I'm not worthy, you know, whatever it might be. And, you know, you also have to reprogram those core wounds. There's a really powerful tool that we call um, belief auto-suggestion reprogramming inside the personal development school. Um, and it uses repetition and emotion in the form of evidence of memories um, to really help recondition core wounds in 21 days. Um, and it's all backed by science research, um, specifically a, a cognitive neuroscientist work um, named Antonio Damasio. Um, and we really leverage the principles from that. And then I created a tool based on those principles to help shift that. Um, so this is really important work to be doing if we find ourselves stuck in the save me complex. Um, and, you know, in that auto suggestion belief reprogramming tool, as somebody who did a really long term certification um, in hypnotherapy, we leverage deep mechanisms of how the subconscious mind works, because without that, um, it can be really easy to just get stuck solving for things at the conscious level of mind. And the subconscious mind will always, always outwill and overpower the conscious mind. So we have to target things at that level. Now, the last thing I'll just say here before I wrap this video um, is, again, you can check out the Limerence course for free for seven days. And then also, in honor of Pride Month this month, we are doing a... Um, uh, donation for any proceeds from this video specifically to something called the Trevor Project, um, which has come highly recommended. I've seen a lot of really great things from different individuals inside the PDS community. Um, and uh, we will be donating the proceeds of this video to that. And we're also just going to be making an effort for future videos in general um, to donate proceeds from uh, the videos on YouTube. So if you have charities that you highly recommend um, that you want to see some extra support go towards, I'm really excited about that. Um, and I would love to hear from you if you want to post those charities and recommendations down below. We are going to be going through and just doing some research for the next little while and really kicking off not just um, donations for this month, but donations on an ongoing basis to five or six top charities that we select. Um, and we'll just be doing it on an ongoing basis every month from different YouTube videos. So um, if you have something you want to share, please post down below. Please share this video, like it. You know, the more likes, the more shares from this YouTube video that there are, 
Um, all of that, 100% of any proceeds from this video will be going to charity. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to this video, and I will see you in future videos.